we ran it on QI a few years ago. Yeah. Um, which was, there's no such thing as a fish. Yeah, there's no such thing as a fish. No, seriously, it's in the Oxford Dictionary of Underwater Life. It says it right there, first paragraph, no such thing as a fish. <laughs> Welcome to the pilot episode of No Such Thing as a Fish, coming to you from the QI offices in Covent Garden. My name is Dan, I'm sitting with three other QI elves, James, Andy, and Anna, and each week we're going to get around this microphone and share our favorite facts from the last seven days. So in no particular order, here are the best things we found out this week. Okay, let's start with fact number one, that comes from you, James. Um, I went this weekend to the um, Collider exhibition, uh, the Large Hadron Collider exhibition at the Science Museum, which was pretty cool. And I got fact there. uh, The Large Hadron Collider was almost turned off. I think it was turned off for a short amount of time. For what reason? What do you think? Because of the rewiring that needed to be... Maintenance. Maintenance. Maintenance, yeah. Yeah. It was a lot more lo-fi than that. Apparently they found a piece of baguette in the machinery (laughs) and it made the temperature go up by 7 degrees and they had to turn the whole thing off before they found the baguette. If you work with the French, this will happen. (laughs) (laughs) I always throw my baguette into the machine. (laughs) They're actually a pest at (laughs) Surrey. But what they they actually think happened is that a bird somehow dropped it into, um, into a event oh, or wow. something like that and they, it was found there but some of the physicists who were there at the time actually thought that maybe um, it was a time travelling bird sent from the future to destroy <laughs> the experiment <laughs> well, it's just pretty cool that would be the I worst the Terminator sequel ever or <laughs> <laughs> well, when they first went and saw the baguette they're like whoa the Higgs boson is way bigger <laughs> Found it! <laughs> yeah, it's here! Yeah. It's all bread like. That's why they got, turned it off. Job done. Yeah. The Higgs baguette is, the Higgs baguette is covered in tuna mayonnaise. <laughs> Surely someone's marketing a Higgs baguette now in Paris. Oh, they but there, there, was, there was a guy, wasn't there, who um, broke into CERN. Uh, he broke in. Uh, his name was. Uh, how would you say this, Andy? Eloy? Eloy? Uh, Eloy? Eloy Cole. A strangely dressed man, uh, man, he said that he travelled back in time to prevent the LHC from destroying the world. So they've had a number of time travelling uh, Yeah, well that was incidents. one theory, that the reason we hadn't had time travel as yet was we hadn't invented the Large Hadron Collider, which would presumably then be the machine that would get them back. Ah. Uh, as in, you can't have time travellers until you build the machine, so that's mm-hmm. why we haven't had them in the past. Well, here's the final sentence of this story. Mr. Cole, as his name was, uh, was taken to a secure mental health facility in Geneva, but later disappeared from his cell. Police are baffled, but not that bothered. (laughs) (laughs) Wait a second. I should point out that Dan is on (laughs) davidike.com. Because I just Googled it, and that's the first thing that came on, but this is the talk boards. It looks like they've lifted this from... They have it from Crave. Okay. <laughs> Which, I don't know if that's any more reputable, but... Because um, the there was a bit of worry at the time that the, the whole universe was going to end, wasn't there? Like, yeah. They thought that... Because what they were actually doing was um, making very, very, very tiny black holes, and I think in people's minds they thought, well, what if they get bigger? What if they get bigger? They bigger suck and... Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I think what had happened... I might be wrong about this, because I'm going off memory a little bit, but... They, um, I think the scientists said that there was a chance of the world ending, but it was something like ten thousand billion 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 to one chance, which is pretty much the chance of the world ending anyway in that kind yeah. of in that kind of time. But I think they didn't help themselves by saying that, and so all people hear is, "What the world's going to end?" I, there was a big switch on day. Do you remember? It was. Um... It was when the machine was first due to be switched on, and the BBC went to wall-to-wall coverage of it. I had to write about it for private eyes, just everyone going crazy about it. And when it didn't work for another nine months, they couldn't switch it Oh, yeah, I remember months. that. There was yeah. some slight problem in the yeah. workings. Yeah. Just, that's, uh, there was a story in the news this week about uh, the spaceship that had been... Oh, yeah, 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 it's a lot like that. Yeah. Um, is, was... is it called Atticus? Can you check what's the um, it's satellite that we sent up that's been asleep for three years, and we sort of set an alarm on it? to wake it up yesterday. And so, yeah, yesterday. and so there was a big thing where they're all waiting, yeah. and, and they, you could you could stream Mission Control in, uh, was it Russia maybe? I'm not sure what country mm. it was. Was it America? You could or? watch it, what do you mean? You could, you could watch oh, you could Mission watch Control as they were waiting, because yeah. it, it was going right. to be switched on, and there was an hour window where it didn't come on, so they were waiting, and then tension started getting high, and then... Yeah. 
Yeah, so they, so it was actually, it wasn't too long, but yeah, so there was 10 minutes where it was late, waking up, and I hadn't sent any signals back. Um, and then they started to get increasingly tense, and if you watch the video, which I now have, they suddenly start to panic, and it all goes really silent. And then it was actually 18 minutes late waking up, because what they think happened is, somehow, the satellite put its alarm on snooze, uh, <laughs> and just postponed its wake-up call for 18 minutes. <laughs> and then, uh, which is fair enough, you know? If you've been asleep for three years, you can't be expected to just bounce out of bed. <laughs> I think it was Rosetta, wasn't it? Rosetta, it was Rosetta yeah. Rosetta, yes. Yeah. So that's incredible. Could have been Andy a triangle. has got an awesome solar system fact, haven't you? Yes. Okay. Now, this is. Now, Anna, you haven't heard this yet. So no, I haven't. I'm prepared, prepared for your jaw to drop. <laughs> this has raised some controversy in the office, but let's go for it. Okay. In 2007, yeah. the largest object in the solar system was. What do you think, Anna? The sun. No. It was a comet called Comet Holmes, which was... The, the comet itself, the main body of it, is three kilometres across. And it had this extraordinary explosion at the surface. And the corona of dust, they call it the, uh, the Comet Coma, is the name for it, was bigger than the sun. It was wow. 1.4 million out kilometers. of here! It was! It was 1.4 million kilometres across, I think that's And correct. that all counted as part of the body of the comet? Yep, it was 1% of the total mass of the comet. It's a huge dust, because the sun is emptier than we think it is. I think that's fair to say. Is it? Yeah. I mean, it depends on your definition of the sun, really, because th <laughs> there's an argument that the sun is actually the size of the solar system, because that's as far as the, as the solar... As you know, the like energy as the light goes, pool. yeah, exactly. Oh, so, and yeah, doesn't no, that the count? solar wind goes all the way out to there. There's still right. particles from the sun that are getting all the way out to to Pluto and beyond. So there is an argument that we all live inside the sun at the moment. Yeah. Well, if that's true, then then the comet thing is not. <laughs> yeah. but if the sun is the size that everyone everyone else says it is. <laughs> this comet was bigger briefly, it and is, no I one think it's only me it. who says that. <laughs> What's the comet called? Comet Holmes, as in Sherlock. Oh, Comet. Yeah. Okay. Big boy. Big boy. <laughs> <laughs> they're that's scientists, what... Anna. They're not, they're not just doing this for the naming rights. That's what you would have called it. That's what I would have called it. Yes, that's why I'm not a scientist. There's actually a body. Alex told me to look this up because I can't remember what it's called, which is responsible for the official nomenclature of um, everything in the solar system. Mm. And it has these like most specific rules about what everything has to be called. It's called like the internet. It's a branch of NASA. Um, so, for instance, one of its rules is that Martian craters that measure less than 60 kilometers in diameter have to be named after villages of the world with a population smaller than 100,000 people. Wow. So they have to, so like Tooting, there's a crater called Tooting because... Is there? Has, yeah, there is. That's um, so pleasing. And the other one, and this is, I think was the headline that James saw when he came around to my computer earlier, is <laughs> there is to be no penis on Venus. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is your excuse. I saw there is no penis on Venus, and now you're making up a story about it. Anna, Anna was ho hopefully Googling in case there was. <laughs> in case. I've been through one. Yeah. There's nothing here for me. <laughs> Come on, guys. Men are from Mars. Men are Women from are Mars. from Venus. And yet there's no, like, only male rule on Mars. So there, you're not allowed to call anything on Venus um, after anything male. So everything on Venus. And you look oh, at really? all this, everything. All really? the craters. Why? All the mountains. Because that's Just Venus is... I don't know. It's, no, because Venus was female. Venus is female. Except this was only introduced in the early 70s, and before that they had named the highest mountain. Mount Venus. Which is... <laughs> 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 which is called Maxwell Montes, named after a male physicist. But so he's sitting there on Venus, the only guy the only who has mountains, surrounded by thousands and thousands of women. And yet you can't do Can anything about it that because he's a mountain. That's funny, isn't it? <laughs> that is brilliant. That is amazing. Um, L for ladies for the L series. L for yeah. ladies, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That is a hell of a Lads and lasses. Yeah. Yeah. The only man on Venus. That. Um, cool, okay, well let's wrap up because we've got stuff okay, to do. Okay, before we go, I just yeah. got to say, if anyone wants to see the Collider exhibition, it's pretty good. Go down to the Science Museum on until the 6th of May. It costs about a tenner to get in. I highly recommend it. And what do you get to see? Is it? Um... Um, it's just lots of facts about how it works yeah. and there's lots of interactive stuff. It's really yeah, and do us a favour, uh, bring a baguette, leave it there, <laughs> take, a, take a photo of some baffled scientists yeah. trying to work out how we got in there. <laughs> okay, fact number Number two, uh, Anna, this one's yours. Yeah, um, so for the last month of his life, US President James Garfield ate everything through his anus. Yeah. <laughs> Big claim, Anna. <laughs> we will get letters from a lot that of people is mine. here. Mm. Um, 
Yeah. I mean, I wasn't there, but this is what the doctors tell me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, so James Garfield was, as everyone obviously knows, shot in July 1881, and he lived for a further 80 days. Um, he was shot in the small in the like small of his back and once in the arm, so doctors now say he would have been out of hospital about two or three days later. But obviously, because... Um, medicine was not as quite as advanced as it is now. In 1881, they just invited like dozens of doctors to his bedside who all prodded around trying to find this bullet. They didn't know where the bullet had gone in his body. Um, so they gathered around, prodded about, made him worse and worse. He stopped being able to eat. And obviously, if you stopped being able to consume food in those days, they just shoved it up your ass. And so that's what they okay, did. So does that work? Um, it does not work, oh. no. Uh, it was widely discredited in the early 30s. I think you get about an eighth of nu- the nutrition from some of the food. Oh, but so there's some food that you can't absorb at all. Uh, what yeah. I love is the list of foods that he was fed in this oh, yeah. Beef bouillon, um, egg yolks, <laughs> milk. Egg yolks? Egg yolks. Wait, <laughs> milk. sorry. Come on, guys. Um, egg yolks was only true for a while because I was reading the uh, the doctor at the time his report on it. So yeah, he was fed egg yolks for a bit of time and then all the surgeons complained that it was causing annoying and offensive flatus. Um, mm. And so they ceased feeding him <laughs> egg yolks. That did the trick, So apparently. they stopped it because it was annoying them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not the other way around. Yeah. <laughs> they, guys, I'd, I'd be quite happy to eat an egg uh, <laughs> with my mouth. <laughs> That's, that's all right by you guys. <laughs> that's the thing as well. He wasn't shut at his mouth. <laughs> no, no. Like, presumably his ha- mouth still he worked fine. He, he could still yeah. eat. <laughs> he just, could he still talk? They just, he... Yeah, he could still talk. <laughs> yeah. uh, the doctors were amazing. The main doctor in charge of saving him was called Dr... Dr. Willard Bliss, with yeah. two doctors. His first name was Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> that's not amazing. Yeah. The doctor... It's um, really tragic. You should go on with the list, because they did feed yeah, him things. Yeah, what else is there? Oh, that's all I know about how, what he was fed in that time. I think maybe that was the only food. They were already into grinding yeah. beef. But he was also given whiskey um, and drops of opium and um, whiskey up his stimulants. Ass well. Whiskey up his ass, yeah. Because, right. I mean, if you're in that sort of a state, I think at least you want a few drowns. Yeah. It's it terrible. <laughs> he was such a talented man that he could, his party trick was he could write Latin in one hand and Greek with the other oh, yeah. simultaneously. Wow. He's, he campaigned for the presidency in more than one language. Wow. Some places he campaigned in English, some places he spoke in German. He was this immensely... No, I don't think he did the matter. He, he was president for four months and then, <laughs> and then he was shot. And then he lingered for another three months. <laughs> It's, so it's, it's like no true. matter what, like you could write Greek with your left and Latin with your right. <laughs> the fact you could eat through your anus <laughs> will forever overshadow. It trumps it all. I actually looked up because um, I thought uh, I, I knew Andy would said earlier that you were you had a list of things that he ate. I thought it'd be interesting to look up of what his favorite foods were. <laughs> <laughs> So that if I was there, I'd be like, I'm going to try and get you a like a sneaky dish on the side, you know. <laughs> uh, so his favorite food was um, squirrel soup. What? Uh, yeah, really? Was, yeah, and actually, um, it, there was a guy called Crook, um, and he really wanted to cook squirrel soup for the president, but they needed him to be a bit better. I think to the point where he was eating again with his mouth. <laughs> that kind of good. Um, and they were given permission to shoot squirrels on the grounds of the soldiers' homes in order to um, oh. get the squirrels, in order to do it. And he loved milk, really loved milk. And there was a company called the Adams Express Company from Baltimore, and they actually sent a cow to the White House so they could milk it every day so that he could get fresh milk uh, while he was dying. Well, he was, he, he was shot. He was given milk in the manner we've described. Yeah. yeah. But, but yeah. Well, Anna, you, uh, Anna, you were saying that um, Alexander Graham Bell was there while he was dying. Yes. So, I mean, I initially thought about phrasing this fact as Alexander Graham Bell actually killed President James Garfield, and then I felt like there might be lawsuits from his family. But because they'd lost the bullet and cause in, in his body, and because coincidentally Alexander Graham Bell had been developing the metal detector at the time, uh, they invited him along, and he tried to find the bullet in, in his body but failed on account of the fact that um, he was on a bed with a lot of metal bed springs, and so <laughs> they obviously thought he'd been machine gunned down. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. They're everywhere. There's nothing I can do. It's just incredible that... The, I mean, the genius of inventing a metal detector and then not thinking to remove the massive source of metal <laughs> under the thing. <laughs> That's incredible. Um, I mean, you imagine, like, quietly, Alexander Graham Bell was like... 
think the president is a robot. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been his discovery while we were right around the lake. I'm not sure if James Garfield was a robot. He might have been a sea cucumber because they actually do eat through their anuses. Do they? Yeah. yeah. They found this out quite recently because you know that they breathe through, you know they breathe through their anuses. They, they pull Obviously. water in and then push it out and the Good. oxygenated um, water helps them to breathe. Oh. And they thought, well, maybe they take in food there as well. And they found out that they have a gut in the middle and they eat through the mouth and through their anus. So it comes wow. in from both sides. That's pretty cool, isn't it? That yeah. is cool. That's amazing. Yeah. And can they was, taste uh, it? Do they have taste buds in their anus, do you think? I don't know if they have taste buds in their anus. Well, James, you found out what else you can taste with, didn't you? Oh, yeah, you can taste with your testicles. Well, <laughs> well here's the thing. Yeah. You have taste receptors in your testicles. Mm. No one's quite sure what they're for. But you also have smell receptors in your lungs. And the reason we do know why they're there, because if you get a really terrible smell and your uh, receptors in your lungs can, can smell it, then it'll close up your esophagus and stop anything poisonous from going into your body. Yeah. But um, as far as I know, no one's found out yet why we have taste receptors in their testicles. Maybe someone will tweet me at mm. Egg Shapes if you know why we can taste with our <laughs> testicles. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, let's move on to fact three. That is James, your fact. Yes. Uh, so my fact is, in 2013, six people in the US named their child Mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just love that. I love the kind of thing which we do on QI, which is sometimes just get a load of data and mine through it for the funny bits, mm. um, which is where this came from, which is a big list of all the baby names in America. <laughs> Mushroom. I mean, it's it, what would possess you to... I think it sounds quite nice. It does sound it's cool, nice actually. Sound. Mushroom. Mushroom. Hey, mushroom. Shroom. It's sort of... Shroom. Shroom, shroom for sure. Shroom. It's better than fungus. Fungus doesn't sound nice. Because mm. I like... I, I think it's weird because I have a mild mushroom phobia. I, I find <laughs> what? It, yeah, do I do. Yeah, I find them, like, very disgusting things. Well, don't look over your shoulder now, Shroom. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's just the way that they reproduce with spores and they grow on dead things and stuff. I just find. I think a lot of people icky. don't. Yeah, don't like mushrooms. Are, there's something dead about them. Yeah. yeah, and it's a weird one that you. Um, I find because my friend hates mushrooms as well, and if I have a pizza with them, on oh, we have to we remove them. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know him, Ash, um, oh, Ash who yeah. who did the theme tune for our show. Oh yeah. Um, and pre yes. Uh, but um, you you kind of have to respect. A hatred of mushroom or a fear of mushroom in the same way you respect someone's religious beliefs. Like, <laughs> I always feel like I really feel like like if someone doesn't like mushrooms, I really have to be like, oh, okay, I, I appreciate that. You I, I will remove it from any of the foods that we will have in this house from here on in. Really? Yeah, it's yeah. true. Mushrooms, you know, is they a really hate deal. it. Yeah, they hate it with a passion. Like, mm. oh, really, it's a bit like vegetarianism because you're excluding an entire. Um, area of the... Uh, the is, are mushrooms their own kingdom? Yeah, yeah. And fungi because, are a kingdom, aren't they? Yeah, fungi are a kingdom in the same way that animals and plants are. But if you mm. think, actually, uh, mushrooms are more closely related to animals than they are to plants. Are they? Yeah. No. Yeah, that's true. How? How? Yeah. As no. in they branched what, off... What, what animal-like activities <laughs> do they take part in? <laughs> do you get packs of mushrooms hunting another thing <laughs> <big> of mushrooms? <laughs> The mushroom approaches its prey <laughs> <laughs> really slowly. Yeah. Um, I love names. I'm obsessed yeah. with with because I, I I always find them particularly in pop culture. I mean, it's it's definitely been the rise of the celebrity world that suddenly mm. they just it's like celebrities are going. I've called my child mushroom. What are you going to do about it? Yeah. Everyone's <laughs> like, well, nothing. Good. Oh, Catch you later. We'll do the oh, same. Jay Z's <laughs> out. Like, yeah. yeah. Because um, uh, my two favorite ones from recent times are Jermaine Jackson of the Jackson Five has changed his surname from Jackson to Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> so he's uh, he's taken with an apostrophe it, now. No, so oh. it's instead of Jackson with an O N at the end, mm -hmm. it's U N. So it's Jack's oh. son because he doesn't want to be associated anymore with the yeah, Jackson but, yeah. brand. Yeah, that'll, that'll, that'll help. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and he held a press conference because he was talking about his new album and he announced it as a press conference. He said, by the way, I have changed my name from here on in. I want to be now known as Jermaine Jackson, not Jermaine Jackson. <laughs> and, and so they asked him, why have you done this? And he said... I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> so we don't know his actual proper reasoning. That everyone just thinks that he wants to get away from it. I have this big list of American um, 
people's names, yeah. uh, like baby names uh, from 2013. And these are all um, male children with five people uh, named these names okay. uh, in America. So Vader. Darth Vader. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's a good name as well. And also Vader was a uh, WWF wrestler. Oh, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Is there um, anyone called Garth Vader? <laughs> Just accidentally. No, no, no. Typo. No, 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 with a G. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, it happens all the time. <laughs> anyway, can I just pick up my asthma pump? <laughs> <laughs> so, Vader, yeah. yeah, so uh, five boys called uh, Vader, five boys called Kestrel, which is quite a nice name. Yeah, yeah. Kestrel's good. Yeah. Five boys named Lucifer. Not, not as nice. Not oh, that's boys. an odd one, yeah. Yeah, not as nice. It means light bearing. I mean, they could have said that he started out well. Yeah. <laughs> he was an angel to start. That's that is weird. Uh, five boys called Sophie. <laughs> <laughs> and also Romance and Naomi. They were boys with those names. Oh. oh. No. Romance is um, quite nice. Unfair. Romance is very nice. Uh, oh, Obama's mum. Do you know what her name was? No. This really shocked me when I read this. I was reading his autobiography, and because remember the time when he was initially being nominated, everyone went on about his name. Like it was yeah. a big yeah. thing, his name. And so I'm surprised no one picked up on this. His mother's first name was Stanley. Stanley Obama. Wow. She was called Stan the Man at school. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, in. in the olden days, obviously, names sometimes do change sex. If you, um, I looked at the 1880 census, and there were 13 uh, girls in America called Frank. And, uh, is it short oh, for anything? Um, uh, like Roosevelt. Oh, was it Roosevelt had an aunt called Frank? One of the yeah. American presidents had an aunt called there Frank. There were also yeah. 14 okay. Cecils and 46 Johns that were all female. Wow. And um, in the last year in America, there were 31 Johns because they presumably oh, they spelt John it. wrong. It's a tough word. Yeah, Can and you... also there were um, 1,436 1, people called Israel, and 64 called Israel. Mm. Israel. Yeah. Israel, man. <laughs> I also, I, uh, I love people who have a name that kind of means that you can do a lot with it, uh, like Mike Love of the Beach Boys. So love being his surname, he's obviously gone great. I can put love onto everything. Mm -hmm. So he really, he's got four unreleased albums. They're really bad. Um, so the first album was called First Love. Second album was called <laughs> Second Second Love. Uh, Country Love. Oh, he, nice. He missed a trick there. Yeah. Uh, then there was Looking Back with Love. Uh, this is great. The that that one was released. That one made it. So the third unreleased one was Unleash the Love. <laughs> and then this is the best one at all his fourth unreleased album anyone ever bash what pun title mm -hmm. you love have? hurts um, ooh that's good yeah 15 love <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice. no um, Andy um, the power of love that's good but no where is the love we're just naming other songs he can't yeah. steal other songs he can't in his steal. Album. okay yeah. it was Mike Love not war that's <laughs> amazing <laughs> We know someone called Diamond Love, don't we? We do oh, know yeah. Diamond Love. That's yeah. very good. Oh, and you you had your friend's dad. That's I love this one. Okay, yeah. Um, so this is um, Jenny Ryan, yeah. who's um, done a lot of work on QI in the past. And her um, stepfather, I think, is called... He was called James Brown. And he got so annoyed with people making jokes about him that he changed his name to Dan Brown, <laughs> <laughs> who then became the most famous author of all time. That's so good. I love that one. That's great. Fact number four. <laughs> okay, fact number four is, I I've, I've, was talking to this uh, historian the other day on Twitter. Because I don't know if you saw on Friday last week on Twitter, uh, it just went nuts with people, historians, talking about Alfred the Great's bones being found. Because it's we haven't found many monarchs, right? Generally. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, we famously found Richard III. Richard we? III about two years ago. And so they're really excited because they dug up an area where they thought Alfred the Great was meant to be buried. Turns out he wasn't buried there. Uh, and then they went to a museum storage where they had a bunch of other bones that they assumed to be animal bones. And they found his pelvis bone now. So we have Alfred the Great's pelvis bone. Or do we? They don't quite know. The Where's moment. the rest of him? If we are We're not sure, pelvis. but we have a pelvis bone. Which feels just really like, you know, all those like classic... Um, Jesus' grandmother's head and all those relics of the past. Yeah. I have a fact about pelvis bones. Do you hear it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Weirdly enough. Absolutely. Okay, so um, 
there's a, a department in the Natural History Museum that if you find something weird in your garden or whatever, you can give it to them and they'll tell you what it is. And it's usually people who find what they think is like jelly from space or cryptozoology things. Jelly from space? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's what people think, you know. What is it though? Okay, that wasn't my fact, but... <laughs> so jelly from space is um, whenever there is a meteorite, people seem to find this jelly on the floor. And there's been, for hundreds of years, people have thought that the two are um, to do with each other. Yeah. Nobody knows what it's from. It's called star jelly, um, and nobody really mm. knows what it is. There's we, lots of theories. There's jelly that we don't know what it is? I think, yeah. I've, I've, heard, heard, of it. I've heard of star jelly, but I didn't, I've never researched what it is. You've not researched, you know about this mysterious jelly yeah, substance. Yeah, I heard about it and I thought, well, I'll just leave that be. I'm sure the <laughs> team working out. You can't be curious about everything. Right? <laughs> yes. Okay, so as well as getting weird jelly, they also get what people think are je- uh, dragon heads. Yeah. And whenever they find a dragon head, it is usually the pelvis of a seabird like a puffin. Because apparently a puffin's pelvis looks like a dragon's head. That's great. Wow, that's, so all, that's my pelvis. Fact. All claims of dragon heads turn out to be pelvis. Yeah, the ones that these guys get, yeah. Mm. Because do you know that this thing about um, you find people thought that you would have one eyed monsters, so they're like what they what do you call these monsters with one eye? Cyclopses. 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 Yeah. And the theory is that what they actually did <clears throat> is they would find the skulls of elephants and were the yeah, yeah the yeah. elephant skulls actually look like they have a big hole in the middle like mm. it would be one eye hole and that's where the theory sometimes comes from well the best thing that you've told me that i've been telling everyone for the t- past i don't know two weeks is that the majority of um sightings photos taken of sea monsters uh turn out not to be sea monsters mm. but in most cases uh the penises of gray whales because they mate at the surface. That's amazing. So these giant... Grey whales, they always mate at the surface, and they always mate in threesomes, two males and a female, which means that there's always one spare penis floating around the surface. <laughs> Sticking out of the top of the water. Yeah, if people Google this, if you're at home listening and you Google grey whale penis, <laughs> you, you will word, see it, and it does look like... Whale it does. Okay. Like, that's very important. But, but it's yeah. very true. I've looked at it, and they, the majority of photos that you will see of people claiming to have caught a sea monster yeah. on camera, they just they have it. <laughs> but anyway, so on, on Twitter, when I was talking to um, Greg Jenner, Francesca Stavrakopolo, all these historians, they, they started off by going, wow, Alfred the Great, an interesting find, potentially. And then they're all now saying, not so much an interesting find, like it probably will turn out not to be. But it got me, I just wanted to look into it, because I didn't know much about it. And it led me to the story of how Richard III's bones were found recently. Yeah, so they were f- found in a car park in Leicester. They were we found in a car park in Leicester. So what I didn't know, we all know that exactly, it was a very big find. What I didn't know is the person who found it, Philippa Langley. Do you, do, does anyone here know about Philippa Langley? So you do, James. Anna, do you know no. that? Okay. What would you assume the person who found uh, Richard III's bones what, does for a profession? You assume she was an archaeologist, although uh, I have read something about her that tells me she's not, and also I assume you wouldn't ask me if she were. You, you are, you, you're like Sherlock. <laughs> I'm going to go with an archaeologist. <laughs> yeah, so she's not an archaeologist. She's a screenwriter. She's uh, she's been writing for the last seven years a story, a, you know, a script about Richard III, and she got involved in research. And so she started going to all the places where potentially Richard III was supposed to be buried. She went to Leicester, and she went to a spot where it was a loose end. It didn't look like where they said he might be buried, where he was. And as she was leaving from effectively a disappointing trip, another one over the course of seven years, she saw a car park on the side and got an uncontrollable urge to go inside. So she went into the car park and she was like, I feel like the king is here. But she left it. She went off. She came back a year later. She felt the same urge and she saw on the ground a gigantic R in red <laughs> writing. Just a huge R on the floor. And she said, that's where he's buried. Now, the R is a painted R for reserved on a car park. Oh, right. oh, She's right. not yeah. a crazy person. Yeah, no. And so she said it's here. No one believed her. She raised £34,000 for them to dig it up. She got Channel 4 to come and film it. And they dug in the spot and Richard III was there. 
And it was a psychic, um, what was the word that I said to you earlier? A Andy? presentiment. A yeah. psychic presentiment. She just went, this is where he is. But what you don't wow. know is that she's actually been going all over the country digging up holes for 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> doing exactly the Anything same thing. Anything that had an R on it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Every pothole you So yeah. does yeah. that mean, Dan, that you believe that psychic... No, not at all. I just think that's one of the most wonderful... Co- like, that story could not get any better. That a giant mm. R, like an X marks the yeah. spot, but, but with the yeah. initial of the king. You know that the Ministry of Defence spent like twenty thousand pounds trying to prove that um, ESP existed. Only like even in the last twenty years they did that. Really? Yeah. So Why was... were they trying to prove that? Well, I always think the reason they do it is because they think if it does, we want to be first. Yeah. And they think the Russians are probably going into this. Mm. You know, so is everyone else. We might as well have a go at it. I could have told them that it didn't. In fact, I tried to tell them really hard. <laughs> 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 what yeah. was strange when they found Richard III, I thought, is we'd actually run on QI a few years ago um, whether Richard had a hunchback. Mm. And we said, you know, he didn't. It was all made up by Shakespeare and people who wanted to deface him after his death. But then when they found mm. him, they found that he did have like an arch to his... Yeah, to an, his S, an S-shaped um, spine yeah. is what they said. Um, but no, it, it's... it's I. It, I just find that fascinating because I love it when things are found by people who shouldn't be finding the mm. thing in question, yeah. but are convinced they're going to find it. Yeah. I mean, I, that's the only instance. I is it find. maybe it's something to do with the fact that just like you usually do dig up ground, like either it's agricultural ground, so you dig it up or you're like putting buildings in, so you dig it up. So car parks don't really need foundations. So they're just things that haven't been discovered yet. Not sure. Because, yeah, there are quite a lot of discoveries. In fact, I think we should ask at some point um, the question, what vital archaeological discovery was made under a car park in Leicester last year? Um, I'm going to say that was the body of Richard III last year. Oh, James, you fell right into the oh, bedroom. No, no, no. <laughs> last year, yeah. Last year? Um, no, no, I didn't. Yeah, another car park in Leicester. Uh, same team who dug up the Richard III after the psychic woman pointed yeah. them in the right direction. Um, dug up this um, ancient Roman cemetery, which like revealed a whole bunch of stuff about how Romans used to bury pagans and... Um, Religious people and Christians together, and that is yeah, just reveal this. Wow. Another car park, Leicester. Why don't we just dig up all the car parks in Leicester. Yeah, yeah. So under that one, they had Romans. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> dig up the helipads. You will find King Harold. <laughs> <laughs> Cool, so that's our show. Thanks so much for listening to No Such Thing as a Fish. If you want to find out more about any of the things on this show, you can go to qi.com slash podcast, where we're going to have pictures, we're going to have extra bits of information and biographies of every single one of the elves who appeared on this show, and you'll find out about who's going to be appearing on our future episodes. If you want to tweet us individually to ask us about something we said, you can get me on at Schreiberland. Uh, James, you're on... At Eggshaped. And Andy? At Andrew Hunter M. And Anna isn't on Twitter, but we're going to try and get her on it at some point. But until then, if you want to get to her, uh, at Quickopedia. So anyway, we'll see you again next week. uh, And hopefully you enjoyed the show. And join us again next time. Goodbye.